Formal intro, I'm Chris, I'm the co-founder, uh, co-owner of the company. Um, I started it with Tony, my business partner, back in April 96, uh, probably before most of you were born. Um, since then, um, we've also uh, started, actually I've finished, uh, a second label called Med School, which we ran for 13 years. Um, we have our own booking agency, Clinic Talent, which we started in 2015. <coughs> And in 2020, we acquired a majority stake in a label called Solvent, um, which is run by three young guys. One of whom happens to be my nephew, Joe. Um, we do everything, if you like, mm -hmm. uh, that I think a, a modern music company maybe would like to do. Principally, um, first and last, we are a record label. So the, the raison d'etre for us being here is that we love music, we nurture music, we believe in music and we release it, support it, share it and try and monetize it on behalf of our artists. So we are a record label, we release music on all formats, multi-formats, we of course, especially these days, are predominantly digital but uh, we make vinyl, we still make CDs because amazingly there's still a market for them. Um, we are also a publishing company. Um, I'll touch on that a little bit later. Um, publishing basically being the songwriting, the composition behind music, uh, not the actual recordings themselves, but the actual compositional rights. That's an essential part of um, what we do as a music company. We are also a fairly well-established event promoter. We do a lot of shows. Uh, we do festivals, we do club nights, we have residencies, we do festival stage takeovers, label tours, all that kind of thing. We've been um, running our event brand hospitality since 2001. Um, we are a sync licensor. Sync licensing, again, that's something I'll touch on in a bit more detail a little later. Um, we have a fairly established merchandise range because, um, <laughs> you know, people like it. Uh, it means that I get free clothes, which is very helpful. Um, a well established web shop, uh, which is another key part of the business. Um, through which we are able to sell everything that we do, our digital music, all of our clothing, um, and all manner of other things as well. So we are 100% independent. What that, I guess what that means in the music business really is that we are not, you know, we're not part owned or fully owned by one of the three major companies um, or owned by a, you know, um, an investor or anyone else. It all sits under one roof. Uh, we're currently a staff team of 26, uh, based in South East London, just, just south of Brixton, a place called Hearn Hill. We own our own building. We've actually owned our own premises since 2004. Um, that was a fairly essential part of the growth of the business. Um, we, like so many other companies, we were just renting space. We used to, we used to work in West London. And we realized that from the late 90s that we were spending so much money on our rent um, that really if we could be channeling that into actually like taking out a mortgage on a property, that hopefully would lead to a fairly essential investment for the company. So uh, we took our first mortgage out in 2004 in a funny old place in um, Forest Hill in South East London and then eventually moved out of that because it was too small for the, uh, for the growing staff team and we're now in Herne Hill. So we are... Uh, on a small in, uh, industrial estate where we have um, a studio, we have uh, our warehouse, we have our office spaces, meeting rooms, we have um, now a dedicated uh, streaming room and a photography space. Um, things that we've sort of evolved, particularly in the last couple of years, um, I guess off the back of the pandemic, um, when we, you know, we realised that we needed to use the building that we own um, in a much more sort of multifaceted way. It wasn't going to be enough for it to just be an office space or just be a studio. We needed to create and deliver and share all manner of content, particularly video content, you know, DJ mixes, DJ streams, uh, interviews, podcasts, all that kind of thing. So I'm very happy that we've managed to, in the last 18 months, you know, we've invested in a lot of other facilities within that building so that we can be more flexible and we can deliver more things for our fan base. 
Um, current roster um, includes people like Kings of the Rollers, Metric, Flavor D, P Money and Whiny, Solar, uh, many others. Um, some big names of, of our history includes Cameron Crooked, High Contrast, Net Sky. Um, we, I guess, within drum and bass, we were one of the first labels to really sort of focus on artist careers in a sort of, I mean, it sounds a bit old fashioned, maybe it sounds a bit obvious, but um, we, had, we had worked on a label before Hospital. I'm, I started working with Tony in 92, and he had, uh, he had an acid jazz, I don't know if you know what acid jazz is. It's like a sort of 80s, 90s thing. It's actually quite good. Mm -hmm. um, you'd probably call it new jazz now, or Giles Peterson music. But we worked on the label before Hospital. Um, and happily that, you know, that, that gave us an opportunity to make all sorts of mistakes before starting Hospital. You know, we learned a lot about different entry level aspects of the music business. And of course the music business in the early 90s was dramatically different to what it is now. Um, but so in, in getting to start um, Hospital in 96, we felt a bit, hopefully a bit better informed about what we were taking on. But from a creative aspect, uh, which is the driving force in why, why we bother, which is the music. I mean, we were making music together. Um, we really wanted to establish um, album projects within drum and bass. Now, that, in the 90s, that just wasn't a thing. It was just about, it's about tunes, it's about dub plates, it's about singles. No one was really doing artist album projects unless they were maybe on the majors. And so we, you know, we just steadily invested in that. Um, and it continues to be a feature of the label, particularly these days, um, in that I still firmly believe, I still believe in the album format. I recognise that sometimes it has to be delivered differently. Uh, I recognise that sadly not many people buy records anymore. I mean, I do, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm old. Um, so, you know, we still are very committed to, uh, you know, a fairly sort of traditional um, art for artists in terms of the way that we sign them, the way that we look to develop them, the way we look to encourage their songwriting, their music making and their, their if you like, maybe their album trajectory. Um, but things are changing, obviously.